as her brood shelters under her wings. She gives the love of God to her last. Oh, what joy to feel her warm heart beat when they near her all night long. So the young can find repose, then renew to Good evening and welcome to worship. Thank you all for being with us here online. I want to begin just by saying that while I'm happy with how things have been going so far in our online gatherings, uh, I still miss being together with you all in person. And I think I've especially been feeling that this week in Holy Week because it is a high touch time of year there's the foot washing, there's Holy Communion, there's the reverencing of the cross, there's the Easter lilies, there's the music. And so while I'm pleased that we've been able to stay connected in this way, I long for the day when we can be back together in those familiar ways. So uh, I'm praying for that day, and I hope you will join me in praying for uh, an end to this pandemic and uh, a time when we can be back together uh, in person. Tonight we begin our three days leading up to Easter, uh, the great three-day feast. And uh, we begin with Maundy Thursday. Uh, we will have an opportunity for uh, some hand washing to remember the foot washing that Jesus did. And I've invited you to uh, continue lighting your candle at home to set aside this holy place and to remember God's presence among us. And I've also invited you to uh, have a bowl of water to remember your baptism during the confession of forgiveness and forgiveness. Uh, Maundy Thursday is supposed to have an elaborate confession forgiveness because it's the end of our Lenten fast and the uh, promise of absolution is uh, central to our celebration of Maundy Thursday. So please uh, take some time to tra trace the sign of the cross on your forehead as we confess our sins and receive the promise of God's absolution. We believe that God is with us in this time and God is with us in our worship. So welcome to this time of worship. Friends in Christ, in this Lenten season, we have heard our Lord's call to struggle against sin, death, and the devil, all that keeps us from loving God and each other. This is the struggle to which we were called at baptism. Within the community of the church, God never wearies of forgiving sin and giving the peace of reconciliation. On this night, let us confess our sin against God, our neighbor, 
and enter the celebration of the great three days reconciled with God and with one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us renew us and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray together. Eternal God, in the sharing of a meal, your Son established a new covenant for all people. And in the washing of feet, he showed us the dignity of service. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these signs of our life and faith may speak again to our hearts, feed our spirits, and refresh our bodies through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first lesson is from Exodus chapter 12. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, this month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the 10th of this month, they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat of it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a year old male. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. Then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and on the lintel of the houses and in which they eat it, and they shall eat the lamb that same night. They shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roasted over the fire with its head, legs, and inner organs. You shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until morning you shall burn. This is how you shall eat it. Your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. And you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord. For I will pass over through the land of Egypt that night. I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the house where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. Word of God. 
word of life. Thanks be to God. I love the Lord who has heard my voice and listened to my supplication. For the Lord has given ear to me whenever I call. How shall I repay the Lord for all the good things God has done for me? I will lift the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all God's people. Precious in your sight, O Lord, is the death of your servants. O Lord, truly I am your servant. I am your servant, the child of your handmaid. You have freed me from my bonds. I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all God's people. In the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem. The second lesson is from the first book of Corinthians, chapter 11. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took a loaf of bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Word of God, word of life. Thank, Thank you to, to God. The Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put into the heart of Judas some of Simon Iscariot to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, one who has bathed does not need to wash, except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right. For that is what I am. So if I, your teacher and Lord, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, 
And as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment that you love one another, just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Beloved of God, grace and peace to you from God, our heavenly parent, and from Jesus, who is love incarnate. Amen. What does love look like? In some ways, that's the question we are invited to ponder, the question we are invited to dwell in this evening. After all, Bondi Thursday comes from the Latin mandatum, which means commandment, because it was on this night that Jesus gave to his disciples a new commandment, that they were to love one another just as Jesus had loved them. What does love look like? I think it sounds like a nice idea that we should love one another as Jesus loved us. I think most of us can get on board with the idea that we should be loving people. And yet when placed in the larger context of the story of what was happening in Jesus's life that night, we find out just how radical the love of God and Jesus Christ for us truly is. Right before the foot washing, we only get a snippet of John 13, but in the larger context, right before the foot washing, we find out that Judas, one of Jesus' closest friends and disciples, will betray him. Will betray him by turning him over to the authorities to be killed. And then after the foot washing, right around the love commandment, we hear that Peter, another one of Jesus' closest friends, will deny him, will deny even knowing him when he is confronted, and in a time when Jesus is most in need of companionship. What does love look like if this story is our guide, love looks like something so much bigger than we might have expected. It sounds like a nice idea, but it's more challenging than we might expect. Love in the manner of Jesus in this story involves loving even imperfect and sinful people, loving even those who betray us, those who would deny us. What does love look like? Jesus not only talks about love, but he also gives us an example. He wraps a towel around himself and he washes each grody toe of his disciples. You see, in this time in history, in this culture, foot washing was an act of hospitality. When a host would welcome a guest into a home, uh, they would often provide a bowl of water for them to wash their feet. Most people would have been walking in uh, sandals on dirt roads, and so that bowl of water would have been an act of hospitality to say, here, wash your feet and make yourself at home. Or if the host happened to have a servant, they would sometime give that task to them. And yet in this story, Jesus, the teacher and Lord of us all, is the one who washes the disciples' feet. Usually in our Maundy Thursday service, we would provide an opportunity for foot washing, a moment where we could experience the love of God in this way. But during this time of social distancing, that is impractical. And yet, this story is striking me in a completely new way this year. The thing that strikes me this year is the humility of Christ in that act of love and service of washing feet. You see, we believe in a God who works through humble people, 
through humble acts, through humble objects to, ex to accomplish remarkable things. We might not be able to practice foot washing tonight, but I am reminded of a number, num another humble act that makes an extraordinary difference for us and for our neighbors in this time. You see throughout uh, this period that we are living through, the CDC and others have made a very consistent pitch to us that one of the most important things we can be doing is the humble act of washing our hands with soap and with water. It's uh, pretty hard to think of something more humble than a bar of soap, right? Or a soap dispenser. And yet we are told that our most powerful tool at this time for fighting this virus is soap and water. As it's been explained to me, the virus is surrounded by a layer of, uh, of protein and fat. And so if you were to just wash your hands with water, it wouldn't cut that layer, that fatty layer and get to the virus. But when you wash with soap for at least 20 seconds, you can get rid of that outer layer and destroy the virus if it is on your hand. So what does love look like? If Jesus is our example, we might be called on a new humble path to new humble acts, and even in those acts of humility, find ways to accomplish things for the health and healing and wholeness of our world, of our neighbor and of our community. What does love look like? Perhaps love looks like the humble act of washing our hands. And so a little later in the service, as we sing, take, oh, take me as I am, I will invite you to find a place to wash your hands with soap and water for at least 20 seconds. And in that, we can remember Jesus' great love for us and Jesus' example of humble service. Perhaps love looks like washing your hands. Perhaps love looks like staying home. Perhaps love looks like keeping essential functions of business running. Perhaps love looks like uh, standing up for the vulnerable, speaking out. Perhaps love looks like reaching out to the isolated. Perhaps love looks like offering support to those on the front lines. What does love look like? The simple answer for us is that love looks like Jesus. Love looks like washing your disciples' feet, even when they betray you, even when they deny you. But the simple answer is also this, love looks like you. Jesus says at the end of our gospel reading that they will know you are Christians by this love. They will know you are my followers by this love. You see, so much has changed in our lives in this time, but the love of God remains the same. We've experienced this love experience in the word, we've experienced at worship at Trinity, we've experienced it in Christian community, and that same love is still with you, is still with us. And since we have experienced that love, and since that love is with us now, we can share it with others. Love looks like Jesus, love looks like you, and may the whole world know we are Christians by our love. Amen. Christ God's holy
On this night, Christ gave his friends a new commandment, to love one another as he loved us. We who receive God's love in Jesus Christ are called to love one another, to be servants to each other as Jesus became our servant. Our commitment to this loving service is signified in symbolic hand washing, remembering the example of our Lord who washed the feet of his disciples the night before his death. As we sing our refrain, take, oh, take me as I am, I invite you to find a place in your home to wash your hands with soap and water, knowing that this is an act of self-care and also an act of care for others. And as you do so, think of Jesus, because Jesus is present with us now. Turning our hearts to God, who is gracious and merciful, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. God of love, unite your church with commitment to humble service. Make us your faithful disciples. Speak words of truth and grace through us. Encourage us in self-giving acts of kindness. Let us love one another as you have loved us. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of love, tend to flocks, fields, and vineyards. Bring favorable water for crops to grow. Guide the hands of those who cultivate farm and garden. Let the earth flourish so that all may eat and be satisfied. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of love, you give us a new commandment to have love for one another. We give thanks for organizations that respond to disasters and for agencies that offer relief and humanitarian aid to populations in need, particularly the road home, Luke House, 
local food pantries, and area hospitals. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of love, give ear to all who call upon you for any need of body or spirit, especially David, Jane, Todd, Bill, Joyce, Dick, Myron, Denia, Annie, Amanda, Joanne, Yvonne, Jean, Janice, Chris, Bob, Larry, Kim, Darlene, Keith, James, Joan, and all whom we name now, aloud or silently. Provide for those who do not have enough to eat, those who are unemployed or underemployed, and those who rely on the generosity of others. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of love, you invite us to your table of mercy. Heal all divisions between members of this assembly. Extend the hospitality of the table that your love and welcome be made known to all. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of love, glorify your servants who walked by faith in this life and who now feast with you. Inspire us by the sacrifice of those who were imprisoned, persecuted, or martyred for their faith, especially Dietrich Bonhoeffer. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. According to your steadfast love, O oh God, hear these and all our prayers as we commend them to you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Praise and thanks to you, holy God, for by your word you made all things. You spoke light into darkness, called forth beauty from chaos, and brought life into being. For your word of life, O God. We give you thanks and praise. By your word, you called your people Israel to tell of your wonderful gifts freedom from captivity, water on the desert journey, a pathway home from exile, wisdom for life with you. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. Through Jesus, your word made flesh, you speak to us and call us to witness, forgiveness through the cross, life to those entombed by death, the way of your self-giving love, for your word of life, O oh God. We give you thanks and praise. Send your spirit of truth, O oh God. Rekindle your gifts within us. Renew our faith, increase our hope, and deepen our love for the sake of a world in need. Faithful to your word, O oh God, draw near to all who call on you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So 
God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another in accordance with Christ Jesus. Amen. The God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The God of all grace bless you now and forever. Amen. There are certain things that we would typically do on Monday, Thursday that are hard to include in an online setting. So in light of that, I invite you to continue worship in your home. Jesus was always sharing a meal with us. Jesus shares his meal with us uh, in Holy Communion. And so when you share uh, your meal this evening or on into Good Friday, Begin your meal with a table blessing, such as, Come, Lord Jesus. Halfway through your meal, say the Lord's Prayer. And then at the end of your meal, you can share a simple blessing. And then typically at the end of Maundy Thursday, we would strip the altar, symbolizing the way uh, Christ was uh, stripped and beaten on his way to the cross. And as you do that, as you clear your table or wash your dishes, read Psalm 22. God be with you. <laughs> 